And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. It's Monday, January 13th, 2020. Here's what's happening. The number of those sickened with the flu in New York is going up. The latest from health officials in just a bit. Plus, why a local official braved the icy waters of Lake Erie yesterday. The news starts now. From the team that puts coverage first, this is your source for breaking news. WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Our top story, the number of confirmed flu cases and flu-related hospitalizations are continuing to rise here in New York State. Governor Andrew Cuomo is now directing the New York State Health Department to take additional steps to ensure that health care facilities are prepared for the remainder of the flu season. Now, the latest influenza surveillance reports show another sharp increase in flu cases and flu-associated hospitalizations. Over the last week, more than 1,000 New Yorkers were hospitalized with lab-confirmed influenza cases. That number is up 34 percent from la the last week. Now, the State Department of Health recommends that everyone six months and older receive a vaccination. The vaccine is especially important for people at high risk for complications from influenza, including children under the age of two, pregnant women, and adults over the age of 65. Well, the 19-year-old Pennsylvania man was charged yesterday morning for allegedly driving while intoxicated following a crash in Cattaraugus County. The sheriff's office there tells us that Tyler Benner was allegedly drunk when he drove his vehicle off the roadway just before 4.30 a.m. Benner is charged with driving while intoxicated, operating a motor vehicle after consuming alcohol while under 21, and moving from Lane unsafely. Deputies say Benner was taken to the Cattaraugus County Sheriff's Office for processing and then released on appearance tickets in the case. And with the huge success of legalized marijuana sales in Illinois, New York is going to redouble its efforts to get the legislation passed this year. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo last week highlighted adult use cannabis legalization as one of his 2020 priorities. His proposal includes forming an Office of Cannabis Management to regulate medical, adult use, and hemp programs. The governor also wants to create a cannabis and hemp research center at the State University of New York. If successful, Cuomo would make New York the 12th state to legalize cannabis for recreational use. New York state officials believe a state legal cannabis market could be a tremendous uh, revenue windfall. One research group projects that if New York were to legalize the drug, it could be the nation's second largest cannabis industry. They're projecting $2.2 billion in New York sales by 2023. Well, closer to home, a Randolph native recently graduated as one of 13 new New York State Department of Environmental Conservation Forest Rangers. Jacob Scudlark received the rank of ranger during a ceremony back in December at the Exposition Center at the New York State Fairgrounds in Syracuse. In total, 13 new rangers and 30 new environmental conservation police officers received their diplomas. Scudlark says a passion for hunting, fishing, and camping has led him to the career. He looks forward to the opportunity to be outside interacting with those people who are doing the things he enjoys most. Certainly great to see uh, another addition to quite a force that really any time, you know, in addition to their general patrols during hunting seasons and checking in on fishermen and those out in the wildlife, it seems like any time there's a major search and rescue effort almost anywhere across the state in rural lands, they're there to help. I know locally there's been a number of cases where their efforts really contributed to that. So it's a, a great work by them. Got to say hello to Pam. Hello to Scott. Good afternoon to you. Hopefully you're doing well. Thanks for joining us here on the broadcast. Hello to Wendy and hello to David as well. He says, how about this weather, right, David? It feels like it should be more or less mid-March or even, I guess, mid-April, if you think about it, rather than mid-January. So we'll take it nevertheless. Well, uh, coming up next, we have a lot more local news to tell you about why a group in northern Chautauqua County braved the icy waters of Lake Erie yesterday. But first, New York senior senator's message to officials in Washington. That and more is coming up next. Stay with us.
EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. When you're on the go, stay in the know by downloading the WNY News Now mobile app. Stay up to date on local news, weather, and sports that matter to you. Plus, subscribe to breaking news and weather alerts from the team that puts coverage first. In addition, watch news as it happens with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network. Download the WNY News Now app right now. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. And welcome back to WNY News Now. Certainly yesterday was a pretty windy day for many across the area as trees brought down power lines, which disconnected us from uh, a lot of uh, that technology that we hold so close to our lives. Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter has joined us now with a first look at our weather. And some of the photos that viewers sent us yesterday, it was pretty amazing to see what they captured, Dakota. Had a, a lot of wind that happened. Here's some of the weather eye pictures that came in on our Facebook page. Sandra in Jamestown, some trees down. And again, the strongest winds were early Sunday morning. And of course, we didn't sleep at all on Sunday morning, keeping an eye on this. And uh, another one here, look at how this pole snapped at the trunk. This is a utility pole at the corner of Hazard. And um, I think it's Hazard and... Um, uh, there's a side road here. I can't think of the name of it at the moment, but it's on Hazard Street. And uh, you can see that pole snapped in the wires down there as well. And uh, this is coming from the Randolph Fire Department, a tree blocking a road in uh, Randolph and Byron in Brockton. Now, if you live out in the country, you often have your meter on a pole out by your house. And you can see that pole snapped right there and the meter on the ground. And unfortunately, I think meters are... Uh, I think something for the homeowner, not the electric company, unfortunately. So a lot of people doing a lot of cleanup uh, after that. Uh, 57 was the official high yesterday. That was an early morning high. Temperatures slid all the way through the, uh, actually the high, actually the temperatures were fluctuating over the past couple of days. It was high, low, high, low, high, low, as we had that warmer air just riding, that colder air riding close to the region. The record low for today is 25 below zero, so back in 1981. I honestly believe this is the coldest low temperature Jamestown has ever recorded uh, at to 25 below zero. I don't think we've ever gotten any cooler than that. So hour by hour through the day, clouds around through the day, but the sun is actually starting to peak out here. So I think we'll see some partial sunshine through the day, but more clouds than sun. But we're keeping our eyes on colder air coming away over the weekend. We'll talk about it in just a couple of minutes. Back to you, Jay. All right, Dakota, thank you very much, and we will see you soon. The U.S. economy added 145,000 new jobs last month. That's 100,000 fewer than in November and about 40,000 less than the average over the past three months. It was enough to keep unemployment at a 3.5%, though which it has maintained this historic low for quite some time. November saw a massive boost to new jobs when General Motor workers returned after a strike. The retail sector helped in adding jobs in December due to the busy holiday shopping season. And the manufacturing center, got, sector continues to see a net loss in jobs. Now, wages grew at just 2.9% last year, but low inflation amplified the spending power of those modest gains. Experts say as long as the economy adds 100,000 jobs each month, that's enough to keep up with population growth. Well, New York Senator Chuck Schumer is calling for bomb detection technology that can help spot bombs and suicide vests at busy transit hubs across the country. Amid all the tensions with Iran, and we never know what they're going to do, why shouldn't we have these devices ready? I'm urging the TSA to take immediate action here. The TSA needs to brief Congress on any hurdles or problems and what we can do to overcome those problems. And if there are no problems, and this is just sitting on the TSA's desk, we want them to approve it. It can't do any harm. It can do a whole lot of good. Now, Schumer says the technology is being held up in testing limbo by the Transportation Security Administration. 
Well, President Trump's impeachment trial in the Senate could last as could start as early as this week. The House of Representatives impeached President last month, but now Speaker Nancy Pelosi has held off on delivering the articles of impeachment. And as Athena Jones reports, that pause in the progress could be nearing an end. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi signaling the wait is almost over, saying she's ready to send the articles of impeachment to the Senate this week. I've always said I would send them over, so there's, there shouldn't be any mystery to that. We have confidence in our case that it is impeachable and this president is impeached for life. Pelosi relaying a strong warning to her Republican colleagues, like Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who has backed a resolution to dismiss the charges against the president. Dismissing is a cover-up. If they want to go that route again, the senators who are thinking now about voting for witnesses or not, they will have to be accountable uh, for not having a fair trial. You made President Trump firing off a warning, too. Tweeting, many believe that by the Senate giving credence to a trial rather than an outright dismissal, it gives the partisan Democrat witch hunt credibility that it otherwise does not have. I agree. The White House has been prepared to start the Senate trial since before Christmas, one official says. CNN has learned White House counsel Pat Cipollone and Trump's outside counsel Jay Sekulow will likely represent the president. Senator Susan Collins has indicated she is working with some of her Republican colleagues to see if they can reach an agreement on calling witnesses in the Senate trial. Meanwhile, members of Trump's team struggling to defend why he says they decided to order a strike killing Iran's top military leader. I can reveal that I believe it would have been four embassies. Defense Secretary Mark Esper even directly contradicting the president. He didn't cite a specific piece of evidence. What he said is he probably, he believed... Are you saying there wasn't been. one? I didn't see one with regard to four embassies. Later, Esper seemingly changing his story to CNN's Jake Tapper. What the president said with regard to the four embassies is what I believe as well. He said that he believed that they probably, that they could have been targeting the embassies in the region. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien saying there was a threat without being too specific. Everything the president has said is, is consistent with, and his interpretation is very consistent with the intelligence which showed that Soleimani was plotting to kill Americans, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, and our diplomats. And so, uh, you know, we, 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 feel, we feel very good about it. And Washington officials say the Trump administration's mixed messages are alarming to both Democrats and Republicans, with politicians on both sides saying officials did not cite any impeachment danger to embassies in last week's Iranian briefing. Well, it's time to celebrate Bathtub's favorite toy, the rubber ducky. Why, you ask? It's because today is National Rubber Ducky Day. It's observed every year on January 13th. And according to nationalcalendar.com, the date was listed as Rubber Ducky's birthday back on 1973's Sesame Street calendar. So hot a hot bath, run a hot bath, or get those bubbles going and enjoy the day. Who didn't have a rubber ducky when they were a kid? I mean, it seems like everybody probably had a rubber ducky mm-hmm. at, at one point or another in their in their childhood, and uh, it, it's really great to see, too, Dakota, yeah. um, that there's a day to celebrate some mm-hmm. of the Bath Times favorite toys. I think Sesame Street, too, that kind of changed the way that, yeah. that young people... A lot of kids grew up uh, on Sesame Street. I did, right. too, so... I, I remember the song, the, the Rubber Ducky song. It's like, Rubber Ducky, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, actually, you know, come to think of it, um, back in the 1970s um, on uh, Family Feud, there was an episode of Family Feud where during Fast Money, a woman gave the answer for something you bring to the bath besides soap and towel. She said a a duck. A duck. And, and, and that win it? And, yeah, and, you know, Richard Dawson lost it because he's like, who in the world would bring a rubber duck well, to the bath? And it was up on the board. Well, hey, And there he you was go. totally shocked. It's official so. when it makes it to Family Feud. Yes. Got to say hello to Lori. Hopefully you're having a good day. Hello to Seth. Uh, hello to um, David as well. Hopefully you all are enjoying uh, the Monday and uh, really warm temperatures out mm-hmm. there, Dakota, as we shift gears and take a look at our uh, first defense weather forecast. Yep. It feels more like it should be springtime. It does, but don't get used to that for too long. Let's take the main graphics computer and we'll show you the peak wind gusts from Sunday. Now, the good news here, this wind event was only short-lived. It was only a couple of hours. Uh, we didn't go through a lot of strong winds uh, for long. The peak wind gust throughout the entire region was 69 miles per hour in Buffalo. That's close to 
hurricane force, a Cat 1 hurricane. And uh, Fredonia, close to it, 68. Dunkirk, 62. Jamestown officially at the airport at 58. Claimer from a spotter report, 52. And Lakewood at 41 miles per hour. Those were the wind gusts from Sunday morning. The winds eased as we went through the day. But the winds are ticking right back up again. Here we go tomorrow. This is by noon tomorrow. Wind gusts around 20 to 30 miles an hour. They're not going to be as strong, so that's the good news. But it will be breezy once again. And uh, this particular model shows maybe some of the strongest winds. Maybe by the time sunset time rolls around, maybe a little afterwards. So you can see maybe wind gusts maybe 30, 40 miles an hour once again tomorrow. Now winter is often our uh, winter is often uh, the. Uh, windiest season for us, so not that uncommon. We get a lot of wind uh, this time of the year. So let's take a look at the weather headlines. Here's what's coming up through the day here. So clouds, clouds, clouds. Although we've seen the sun starting to peek through a little bit in downtown Jamestown, we'll call today overcast to mostly cloudy uh, through the afternoon. But it turns breezy once again tomorrow. We talked about that. We will introduce the chance for maybe a couple rain showers, but it's not going to be a big deal. I think it's going to be scattered on again, off again type of rain. Only about a 40% chance of, you know, one in four anybody's going to get a shower but winter looks like it'll arrive next week this is our next big thing and the current 8 to 14 day temperature outlook uh, from the climate prediction center shows much colder air favored across much of the continental 48 so if you want winter here it comes. Now, it's still too early to know exact details in terms of temperature because this goes out for about a week or two, but it looks like we're going to see some real Arctic air coming our way as we head into uh, the later part of the month. So, yeah, don't get used to some of this warmer air. And uh, we had another earthquake that occurred uh, near the Tug Hill region, a 4.2 near the, uh, um, um, uh, it was basically uh, uh, near the border here, 4.2. Now, as I often mention, there's often a, um, a lot of, um, a, a lot of uh, seismic uh, activity that goes on in the state because we actually do have fault lines that run throughout the state. So this was a 4.2. Um, it occurred this morning, 14.9 uh, miles southeast of Salaberry de Valley Field, Ontario, Canada. Hopefully I pronounced that right. And uh, it occurred at just after 5 a.m. Uh, this morning. So the forecast for tonight, here's what we can go. Mostly cloudy and quiet. Otherwise, not a bad evening. Temperatures upper 20s to lower 30s uh, for uh, mid 30s for most areas with a light wind. So it's going to be quiet. How about the future? Next seven days coming up on the screen. 48 degrees tomorrow. There's that wind. A couple of showers, but not a big deal. In the words of James Reed on Wednesday, not too shabby. Mid 40s. So that's not too bad. That's still above average. We get squally once again on Thursday. Temperatures go around freezing, windy once again. Colder Friday, 27. Few leftover snow showers. Rain and snow showers Saturday, 38. And here comes that first hint of Arctic air coming in next Sunday with uh, possible, uh, with uh, that could be a lake effect snow deal with more wind as well. Temperatures only into the lower 20s. Justin. All righty, Dakota, thank you very much. Norm joins us now with a look at what's coming up in sports. That's right, Justin. First of all, the rubber ducky, Dave. I'm sure Bert and Ernie were paying attention to that <laughs> on the TV, but yeah. who knows? Uh, coming up in sports, the Jamestown Rebels had a two-game home series over the weekend. We will give you the details on the results when WNY News Now returns. Want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. WNY Sports Now is powered by Phone Zone of Jamestown. With the largest inventory around, we buy and sell our own merchandise at a price that can't be beat. Have a broken screen? We'll fix it. Learn more at phonezoneshop.com. Welcome back to WNY News Now. I'm Norm Rodriguez with a look at sports. Over the weekend, the Jamestown Rebels hosted a two-game series versus the Johnstown Tomahawks. Jamestown lost the first game on Friday 7-0 and won the second one 6-1 on Saturday. With their Saturday win, the Rebels snapped an eight-game losing streak and bumped their season point total to 27, one point behind the second-to-last Northeast Generals. 
Jamestown will be back in action on Friday night at 7.05 at home as they will play the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Knights for a two-game series. Sticking with hockey, with the help of a three-goal first period, the Buffalo Sabres posted a 5-1 win over the Detroit Red Wings on Sunday. Eric Rodriguez netted a pair of goals. Curtis Lazar dished out two assists. Zach Bogosian, Zemgis Gurgensons, and Rasmus Ristolainen each scored one goal. Linus Olmark saved 21 out of 22 shots. For Detroit, Madison Bowie scored their only goal of the game. Buffalo will be back in action on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, in which they will host the Las Vegas Knights. With the divisional round of the NFL playoffs now complete, the field for the Super Bowl has been slashed to four teams. At 3.05 next Sunday, the Kansas City Chiefs will host the Tennessee Titans in the AFC Championship game on CBS. KC is in the conference championship for the second year in a row, while the Titans are in it for the first time since the 2002 season. Then at 6.40 on Fox, the San Francisco 49ers will host the Green Bay Packers in the NFC Championship game. San Fran is in the championship game for the first time since 2013, while the Packers are in it for the second time in four years. And earlier in the regular season, the Niners beat the Packers 37-8. The winners of the conference championships will face each other in Super Bowl 54 on February 3rd at Hard Rock Stadium, the home of the Miami Dolphins. Oh, excuse me, it's February 2nd, not the 3rd. Um, anyways, that's it for sports today. Back to Justin and Dakota. Okay, Norm, thank you very much. Well, New York State Senator George Borrello, he braved Lake Erie's icy waters yesterday during the annual Silver Creek Polar Bear Plunge for charity. This is Borello's 16th year raising money for several charities like Oshai Children's Hospital in Buffalo. And as you see there, the senator dressed as Cat in the Hat's Thing One. He was joined by former Chautauqua County lawmaker Dave Wolfong, who dressed as Cat in the Hat's Thing Two. Area resident Judy Kelly started this plunge over 19 years ago. In Dakota, a similar, albeit warmer, plunge dubbed the Chicken Swim takes place during the summer to raise even more money for those causes. Would you do it? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I, I, I think it'd be great. I, it'd be really cold, certainly. And yesterday wasn't too bad. I mean, it yeah. was chilly. Um, it'd probably be better if they did it Saturday yeah. or today. But well, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, the air temperatures don't make a difference because, I mean, you know, Lake Erie um, is yeah. still cold. No Lake what. Erie is down into the uh, mid 30s. It's not freezing yet, so that's why we don't have any ice on the lake right now. So, I know in years past, at that uh, very chilly, chilly, chilly uh, fundraiser, they've had to break ice apart. Yeah, break to get the ice to yeah to get the, in. The, yeah. the dive rescue team up there. So uh, certainly, a great, great fundraiser. And good to see everybody kind of come together and having fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that's, that's really what it's all about. I mean, I don't know. I mean, even if it is for charity, I don't know if I'd plunge into 34-degree no. water. Would you just donate and abstain from yeah. the jumping? I'll give you my paycheck. How's that? Yeah, they're good. There you there go. You go. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> well, <it's> gonna, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go to the weather computer. We'll talk about the school day forecast for tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow's weather won't be too bad, but there will be the chance for a few scattered showers through the day. Temperatures into uh, the uh, mid to up, mid to lower to mid 40s today. Boy. You know, this is what happens when you don't get a lot of sleep. And, <laughs> you were busy uh, over the weekend. Yes, yeah, for and sure. uh, we'll take a look at that seven day. You can see temperatures remain pretty much above average through much of this week. And it looks like by the time we get into the weekend, we could see some real winter air. So if you want winter, hang on. It's oh, coming. All right. Well, certainly we'll see uh, what happens when we get to it. And you'll From the team that puts coverage first. This is your source for... Much. That's going to do it for us today. Of course, news continues 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com. We are back tomorrow and uh, hope to see you then. Have a great day.